acompanhem com exclusividade a Marques MMA, a nova equipe da Filadélfia que está vindo com força. Ouça como o treinador campeão Eric Nixik desperta o melhor nos caras mais durões do planeta. Veja de perto Aldemir Sterling, enquanto ele assiste a terceira luta entre Alex Volkanovski e Max Holloway. Olá e bem-vindos ao Conexão UFC. A Marques MMA da Filadélfia se lançou como um celeiro de talentos de alto nível. Guiados pelos treinadores John Marques e Daniel Grace, vários de seus jovens lutadores iniciaram suas jornadas no octógono. Vamos conhecer melhor a equipe e suas chaves para o sucesso nesta edição de Battlegrounds. A lot can be said about that Philadelphia team. They're absolutely killing it, Philly ball. Yeah. All these guys now with Daniel Gracie and John Marquez, these guys are all just surging. Oh! Oh, oh I heard him bad. There's the tap. Philadelphia is back on the map. Stand up, ball out. Let's go. Fighting is in the spirit of that city. Philly MMA scene is like the mob. Everybody knows they're dangerous, but nobody talk about them. They know we're here. They just don't want to mention us. Work on three. One, two, three. I grew up maybe like five minutes from here. The part of Philly called the Badlands. So when you say, yo, where you from Philly? You say the Badlands. It's, people know what's up. It was rough. I grew up kind of like an angry kid. I was always getting into trouble. So in 2004, I started at a gym just to get some anger out. What MMA did for me at an early stage of my life is what kept me alive. I would have been the wrong crew doing the wrong things. And instead of going to the streets, I had to go to the gym. It's a blessing and a curse being from where I'm from. Because if you don't turn it around at the right time, you're dead. So training and I heard my leg kicking real bad. I was out for a little bit, started helping the guys. The group started growing. The fighters like started asking me to coach them for the whole camp instead of just helping them here and there. One thing led to another, the group got bigger and we actually rented a spot around Daniel's gym. I remember starting to train with like six. In the family, we born on the mats. My last name is Vieira, but me, Hanzo, Half Hein, we had the same grandmother. And when I went to fight in Pride, of course, Hanzo said, you're gonna fight with the Gracie name. The Gracies, trailblazers, very revered in mixed martial arts. We train together on Hanzo's school. This is like our kind of uh, family reunion, you know? We are the Gracies. I hope you're ready, because here we come. I was in New York to train with Hanzo, and I said, I, I need to go back to Brazil. It didn't work out. We came back. We're like, where are we going to go? My ex-wife is from Philly, and we are where we are now. Die! <laughs> my first experience with Daniel kicked off the right way. One of my guys had went to his gym to spar. This guy showed up. I'm looking at him moving, and I'm like, this guy moves different. This is what I want my guys doing. So after training, I go talk to him. I say, who's your coach? He goes, Coach John. OK, tell Coach John I'm going to talk to him. Me and Daniel end up being in the same locker room at a regional event. I walked to him. I said, mother where have you been? Man, I'm trying to get you to my gym. So I'm like, yo, <laughs> why are you talking to me like that? And he was like, listen, help me. I'll help you. We shook hands. And then next Monday, I was at his gym. Ah! My coaching style is similar to Danny. That's why we click. Switch! We have the same goals. We have the same mindset. I learned with him, he learned with me. Perfect. I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Your arm goes all around to his shoulder. You should go a little higher. You see the neck right there. Boom. Go, don't hesitate. Coach John trains them. Combinations, head movement, angles, the things that I was missing. That's why we bond together so perfectly. <laughs> the idea of Marquez MMA was actually Daniel's. Daniel put pressure on me, like, yo, you got to market your name. 
you know what you're doing, you building champions. Six years ago, Daniel discovered me. He's the one that put me out there to the world. So he did it, and ever since, it's been good. We just started to call the team Marquez MMA. I had a bunch of pro guys. He had a bunch of amateur guys. His amateurs became pro, and we started to win. They were all literally kids, guys like Sean Brady. Ever since those two clicked up, we have guys coming from all over the country to train with us. We have so many guys. We have Andre, Jeremiah, Pat, Joey Pfeiffer. So we've all helped each other get here. We have a formula that's working. When you come train here, let's go. Come on. Go! Expect help. That's what a fight is. I'm not gonna baby you, I'm not gonna say what you want, I'm not gonna do what you want. You're gonna do what I say, bad habits you have, you're not gonna do that here. Yo, try here. Put your hands up. Daniel and John, they're intense. Yo, mother can you do the drill right? There's no room for someone to be in here that's not here ready to work, that's not about it, that doesn't wanna get better. John, great job, guys. We push them like they're getting ready for the UFC belt. No hesitation, let's go. This makes the fighters stronger, and this makes them learn better. Get the other hook, get the other hook. If they come expecting to be spoiled by us, but they're not gonna be spoiled by us. Stop sweeping people when you get that. If you didn't, you finish. Our team has seen such great success recently. It's because of the coaching. Perfect. Daniel's coaching style is very straightforward. If you're doing something wrong, you're gonna know about it very fast, very loud. I don't wanna see a scramble. I wanna see you holding him down. Oh, oh, oh. Don't stay in front. Circle, circle. Yes. John's a very direct coach as well. Total mastermind with the striking and the MMA. Aggressive but not reckless. Let's go. Oh! That's it. He's out. These guys have read him into being a dangerous fighter. There's another person I'd rather have in my corner. He knows the angles. He sees things so well in between rounds. When you circle, come back with your right hand. It's a beautiful right hook. Good advice from the corner. I'm just very fortunate and grateful to have both of them as coaches. Just seeing where they at now, just fighting, chasing their dreams, it's amazing. I was here from the ground up. It feels good to see that seed sprout. Our heart is tough. We ground hard. Once we get in there and we perform, we perform to our best, 100%. Another dominant performance speaks well for the team. We didn't start as a big team. We start small. So everybody was getting built by us. I think by next year, we're probably going to have eight or maybe more guys on the UFC. And it's just going to grow. Certainly doing something correct up there in Philadelphia. Oh, it's tight. That's tight. There's the tap. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's it. My goal was never to have this. Never's forced to tap. It was just to help people. I never thought that we would get this big. It was just helping people and, and doing what we love. Their gym is on the way up. Me and Daniel, we're authentic, and what you see is what you get. Our partnership has been successful because we have the same goal. Get the guys ready, win, and keep the team growing. The stuff that we've been through in our life made us who we are, so that's why we're so close to our team, because you want to see a friend win. They're not just a client to us. They're our friends, they're our boys. Sometimes we sit back and look at the whole scene, and we're like, man, we're really here. I love it and it keeps me alive. I'm going to do this to the day I die. Natural de Las Vegas, Eric Nixic dedicou sua vida ao sucesso de outros e agora é o treinador principal da lendária academia Extreme Culture. Esse trabalho árduo foi muito bem recompensado. A coroação de Francis Engano, o rei dos pesos pesados, aumentou a lista de realizações de Nick Sik. E ele lidera uma safra crescente de atletas formidáveis que desejam seguir esse exemplo. 
Eric compartilha suas experiências como a força motriz dos melhores lutadores do mundo em Corner de Treinador. I got into this sport kind of just trying to find a, a void in my life. Just kind of stumbled across the place and I saw a bunch of tough dudes getting after it. I felt like that camaraderie, that vibe, just the individuals working to achieve a common goal was what I needed in my life. I was coaching classes and coaching some some young up and coming fighters at the time. And then it was Randy that was sitting there, Randy Couture, and he said, look, man, I, th I think you have a path here. I'd like for you to be able to take over as the gym manager here. You know, I messed up a lot as a kid. You know, I was in a little bit of trouble in college and that came up to bite me. I missed out on a lot of good opportunities in my athletic career. And I think I coached my fighters in a way that I feel like I owed it to the younger version of myself because of the things that I messed up. Get geared up, get a drink of water, let's get ready to go. I see a lot of fighters in my gym that really remind me of myself when I was that age. Fate, universe, God, whatever, puts me in that position to help them realize their full potential and be able to accomplish their goals and help them kind of navigate through this process. I really want to get to know my fighters and understand what makes them tick. And that's sweat equity, man. That's just being around them, understanding what got them into the sport. Good scrambles, let's cover a foot. Understanding their journey and why they're here. What do they fight for? Who do they fight for? Finding all those little things makes you pull that out in you know round five or going into round three when you need that moment. There are many different personalities in this sport. You're not going to coach Francis Ngannou the same way you coach Sean Strickland. That makes your friend. You're always trying to find the perfect match between coach and fighter. That's only going to make the relationship better. Oh, Danny Gay goes Danny Gay. <laughs> I think styles of the fighter are, are very important as a coach because you don't want to typecast or pigeonhole a fighter. They are who they are for a reason because at the end of the day, in MMA, the word A stands for arts. Good idea. They are the artists. You have to let them maintain their creative control. Time. Hey. Aljo, give me a little jog, put those hands up. That's your round, baby. The night of the fight for me is pretty relaxing. You know, I want to stay nice and loose. Your fighter is going to feed off of your energy. I try to keep a calm, cool approach. And you can feel that energy. And even in the room, we'll start shaking out as the warm up goes, or the hands are getting taped and the music starts to change. You know, the environment starts to change. Right before we walk, I remind myself there's no place I'd rather be. At one point early on in my career, I believe it was one of Brad Tavares' fights. He was fighting the MGM Grand. And I'm born and raised in Las Vegas. And I'm glad my dad called me before. He said, hey, I want you to take a second and look around and take it all in. Your fighter's fighting at the MGM Grand. I've done that every time since. Any arena I've ever been in, whether it's been the Apex, you know, Abu Dhabi, I've taken a second just to look around and take it all in. I want to remember those moments, even if it's just a couple seconds, two or three Where seconds. Off. Ready? Ready? And Let's then go. once that bell rings, it just becomes tunnel vision for me. Very, very high stakes fight for the featherweight division. Oh, big left hook there by Ige, that connected. I think your approach needs to change in coaching quite a bit, depending on the fighter and what they need to hear. I can look at Dan Ige and Mirsad Bektik, it's 1-1 one, one going into three. And another tough second round for Dan Ige. Ige hits the stool. Hey, five minutes out of you. Yep, sir. Five minutes out of you, Dan. He does not want it more than you. Yes, sir. He does not want that more than you. Yes, do you understand me? Yes, sir. We always had a saying, what do you do in round three? What do you do in round three? Come on. Let's go. On your toes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That was a moment that I feel like we just were able to get it out of Dan. Yeah! He don't want your One plus. Yeah! Oh, big connection with the left. with a big punch and a kick to the body. Francis Ngannou, Ciro gone. Perhaps down 2-0 at one point. It was 2-2 going into round five. Hey, look at him. Look how tired he is. Hey, we've been through so much together. This is you. You understand yeah. me? This is you, Love kid. Let's go. Oh, boy. Sweep it. Big sweep. And wouldn't that be 
something if Francis Ngannou leaned on his wrestling and grappling to successfully defend his title. And it looks as though Ngannou Come will end the up. fight in a relatively dominant position. Incredible. What a rally from Ngannou after a tough okay. start. Hey, let's go. Let's go. go. I fucking told you. Huh? Huh? It wasn't really much of an adjustment, but I think just delivering the right message at times, I think that's what makes a great coach, finding that thing that lights a fire and they're asked to go out and pull out a victory. My most memorable title fight in the UFC was Francis versus Stipe. And I think a lot of it was because of the first fight and the outcome that happened in the first fight. Beautiful time takedown. And Gano just does not know exactly how to get up here. For the winner, Steve And a lot of the doubt that he wasn't going to be able to execute really any game plan, and Stipe was going to pretty much walk right over him. Eric Mitzig, all the people at Extreme Couture, they prepared him for exactly the challenges that he faced in the first fight. The question is, is he ready? Ready, ready, ready. Watching Francis to go execute exactly what we wanted, it was like playing a video game. I remember being like, throw this. Level. Nice. Oh. And he threw it, and it landed. Early shot from Steve Bay. This is big. And he was like, do this. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Heavy, heavy, get to the back. Good. Break that leg down. Break that leg down. Step around. Nice. Now we go. It was so cool. It was like the closest I've ever been to playing a video game and having the best character in the game. Left eye's hurt. I want middle. Yes. Oh, oh. Knocked out for Ngannou. Stipe right. back to his feet. Eats another uppercut. Oh, 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 That's it. It's the best feeling in the world when you see your fighter get a win. And I just, I love that moment. That man, Eric Nixon, with all the guys that he trained with at Extreme Couture, he's learned. And now he's the heavyweight champion of the world. We are an individual sport once the cage door closes, but you're only as good as the team that you surround yourself with. Having that team around you is the most important part. And sometimes it takes somebody outside of your circle to believe in you the way that I think a coach does. For me, I, I love to be able to help shepherd people in achieving their goals. The love that I share for my fighters is only gonna make me better and, and keep me where I'm at today. No UFC 276, o campeão peso pena Alexander Volkanovski enfrentou o Max Holloway na terceira luta de uma trilogia épica. E o campeão peso galo Aljamin Sterling está bem atento, pois planeja uma mudança para os pesos pena em busca de um segundo cinturão. Acompanhamos de perto o Funk Master avaliando seus possíveis competidores. Dateline Las Vegas. The UFC's annual summer blockbuster has arrived and with it, all the star power you have come to expect from the combat sports leader. Here we go, we got the combat leader. Expectant that these two would engage again. It stands to reason 25 years from now they will be talking about this rivalry series. I got the train with Max twice in Hawaii. Super technical, super, super good with his takedown defense. Gives me a lot of confidence. Both guys are trying to find out what improvements have been made. That was a good cross from Volkanovski. Good counter. Good counter. We need a definitive answer. Who's really the king? Who's really the king of this division? My man, my man, too fast for him. Oh, they're talking, they're talking. I like it. Ooh. Beautiful chap. Vote 
this around. We got a minute left. Another good right hand by Max. They're getting after it. Pretty good response from Holloway late in the round. Back elbow gets home. Oh, close round, close round. Leaning towards the champ round one. Both landed some crisp combinations. Max was having his way pressing forward, but at the end of the day, pressing forward doesn't mean unless you're doing some damage. Max got to get back to kicking, man. That's how Volk beat him the first two times, I think. Oh! Volk landed hard cross over the top. Volkanovski, when he feels like Max is going to enter, he loads up and starts to go. Nice, Max. Oh, Volk, Volk. He throws that overhand beautiful every single time. Volk is a dog, man. Holy He's a dog. Because he's having a bit of a problem trying to get Volkanovski, he's got to just get very active. That shot opened up a big cut, or so it appears. Yeah, oh, yep. that's bad. Beautiful right hand from Volk. Volk is fighting a beautiful fight right now. One minute left in this first round. Second round. Don't quote me. I might have had a couple of cocktails. Super competitive round. Volkanovski, I think up two rounds. I think he's up two rounds, which means he's that much closer to a matchup with me. Volkanovski made the adjustments. Can Holloway do the same thing after the first two rounds? Man, Volk is looking really, really sharp. Smart, composed, seeing everything. Great defense. Let's get some bees, get the click. Oh! Nasty right hand. Yep, slip and rip with the right hand for Volkanovski coming up on a minute to go round three. Volkanovski looking super impressive right here. Super impressive. The difference is he has a photo grappler that can actually take his ass down. Big difference. High kick from Holloway, partially blocked. The right hand got through. 15 yep. minutes down. Volkanovski up to you. Good job, Max. Max needs a big response right here in the fourth and the fifth round. He needs to get a finish, in my opinion. Volkanovski is doing a good job reading the attacks of Holloway, using his footwork to establish ring control. Some people think just because you're in the center, you're establishing ring control. That's not the case. The guy on the outside, the guy in the middle, it depends on the footwork, who's being more effective. Volkanovski is being more effective here, in my opinion, landing the biggest strikes. I think that's what's winning him the fights right now. Volk fighting like he's got something to prove. I like it. I like it. I think if there's a third of a takedown, it changes a lot. A third of a takedown changes a lot. Right now, it's all kickboxing. This is MMA. You got to be able to threaten the takedown. Change up the pace of the fight. Volkanovski is showing a different level tonight. And you see he's getting better in terms of his land percentage as the fight goes on. Volkanovski is kind of picking him apart right here. He's landing the more significant strikes. Volkanovski is fighting beautiful and also really pulling away from Max. You give me your back like that, that's a problem. Those hooks are already in. Volk fighting with his hands down at this point. This is kind of crazy. They're telling him, don't wait, just go, throw some knees. Oh, man, he's just a step ahead and quite a bit faster at this point. Max needs something big. He needs a Hail Mary at this point. This is MMA, anything can happen. Max can get it done, he's got to believe it, he's got to go for it. All right, so it all comes down to this, our fifth and final round. We'll see if Max Holloway can rally. Yeah. Volkanovski has never looked better. That doesn't feel good. Yeah, he's controlling the cage, footwork on point, round five. Hasn't lost a step yet. Oh, that was so close. Just over two minutes to decide the UFC Featherweight Championship. Oh, nasty captain. Oh, my goodness. Now he's pouring it on. He's not mitigating risk. Max picking up the steam right now. Trying. Volkanovski matching him. Volkanovski cruising. Cruising right now. Everything he's doing is beautiful. Beautiful footwork, pivoting out. Beautiful. Well, Max Holloway was game as hell, but the champion Alexander Volkanovsky with a signature performance wow. tonight. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the undisputed.
undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, Alexander. Oh, I got to beat. I think I got the recipe, though. I think I got the recipe. My size, takedowns, mix it up. Same fight IQ. I see the shots. Different type of fight. Let's go! Hey, great fight. Volkanovski fought like a champ, defending the way he needed to. Big opportunity for myself to get in there and mix it up with a legend at this point. Beat Max Holloway three times. Bro, that's freaking crazy. But I think I got the recipe to beat that man. Let's go, baby. Let's go. E chegamos ao fim deste episódio. Entre em contato com a gente e compartilhe a sua opinião online usando a hashtag Conexão UFC. Até a próxima!